everyone. Welcome from across this beautiful planet. We are one mountain, many paths, where our mission is what Barbara Marks Hubbard and Dr. Mark Goffney call the planetary awakening in love through a unique self symphony. Together, we declare that the last day of the old face of evolution is honored as the first day of the new face of creation. I am Christina Tahel, the co-executive producer, along with Krista Josefa and Kirsten Zohar. And we are delighted to be here with each and every one of you today. I welcome all the new people. Please do share that you are new in the chat box here on Zoom or on Facebook or on YouTube. We want to hear from you. When you do chat, chat to all, chat to everyone by checking that your chat settings say all panelists and attendees and not just all panelists if you're here with us on Zoom. Use the chat function to say hi to let us know where you're from and to resonate the Dharma. In one mountain, many paths, we are connected, we are whole, and we are expressions of the entire process of creation. We are activating a new humanity and we are awakening as a new species, Homo Amor, the fulfillment of Homo sapiens. We are a church, a synagogue, a mosque, a temple, a zendo. We are all of it. No one is excluded. Everyone is included. And we come together to attune to the evolutionary impulse awakening within us. Welcome home, everyone. We're joyous about being with you today in week 225. Let everyone know about One Mountain, Many Paths. We are doing this primarily through word of mouth. And I can say that leadership and relationship around our community is a sacred opportunity. We are strengthening this evolutionary we space. Like yesterday when eight of us met in our ongoing study group to explore reclaiming Eros. Next week, after our One Mountain Many Paths broadcast, we will be meeting as a community. So clear space in your calendar and stay after the broadcast, please. On Facebook, we are facebook.com forward slash One Mountain Many Paths. On YouTube, we are One Mountain Many Paths. And right now we are streaming live on both YouTube and on Facebook. So do take a moment and copy either of the links from the Zoom chat box and share those live links on your favorite social media channels like Facebook or Twitter. It's very fun to share this work with people. After our communion, we will send you an email to invite your friends and family and do forward that email right after the gathering. Spend time on our website, onemountainmanypass.org. On the top menu of the homepage or the bottom of each page, you will find our membership links. And notice there also on the website, a lot of the main teachings from, our get, from church are also in books by Dr. Mark Goffney and Barbara Marks Hubbard. On our resources page on our website, you'll find these books for One Mountain, like Tears, Reclaiming Ritual, Integral Religion, and Rosh Hashanah by Mark Goffney, which is a seminal contribution and a work that is a dramatic evolution of the languages of liberation that constitute the profound dignity of our Western traditions. With that, I give you what to expect today. We begin with a first principles recap from last week. Afterwards, Dr. Mark sets our intention. Then David resonates the evolutionary love code. We move into prayer, then evolutionary sermons with Dr. Mark and often with a piece from Barbara Marks Hubbard. 
then Krista will invite us to commit our outrageous acts of love and to contribute our gifts to the revolution. At the end, we do bring everyone on to the Zoom for our goodbyes. Mark wrote what he called evolutionary love codes. Barbara and Mark studied the codes together, often comparing them with Barbara's own 52 codes for conscious self evolution. These codes grew out of their radical commitment over a hundred collective years, crystallizing the new story of humanity. Quote, evolving the course of consciousness and culture, which is the source code of love, unquote. Each communion is a standalone and every communion builds on the week before. One Mountain Many Paths is radically committed to telling the new story. So here goes my One Mountain Many Path recap from last week. The unique self-response to the existential risk of the tech plex. Why are we here? We are needed by all of reality. We are unique expressions of the personhood of cosmos. We each have an irreducibly unique perspective, an irreducibly unique quality of intimacy that comes together to form our unique capacities to give our unique gifts that are uniquely needed in our unique circle of intimacy and influence. The unique creativity of every human being is the essential pillar upon which society is enacted and erected. As it stands now though, this is not available in the webplex, not available in the algorithms, we have got to upgrade the digital world. We need to recode both our own interior algorithms and the algorithms of what Alex Pentlin of MIT calls the nervous system of the planet. We all live in a digital webplex. We are raising our children, the next generations as digital natives. They are living inside of the webplex. So the webplex has to become not a place of alienation, not a place of downgraded humans, but a place of radical aliveness and unique creativity. The techplex, as it is currently constituted, constantly upgrades machine intelligence and is in inverse proportion, constantly downgrading human beings. We must pour evolutionary love into the techplex, into the digital world, into the algorithms. We have to recode the algorithmic structure of the nervous system of the planet with evolutionary love. That is how we move from dystopia to utopia, to a joy that's unimaginable, to a freedom and dignity that we can't even begin to dream of. When human beings come together, both individually, face to face, and through the digital intimacy of the tech platforms to create unique self symphonies, that self-organize and self-actualize reality to a level of goodness, truth, and beauty, which is the inherent intention of reality itself. Let's reject the status quo of superficiality, the status quo of ordinariness, the status quo which refuses to embrace the unbearable greatness and dignity of every human being on the face of the planet. Let's reject the status quo, which doesn't realize that all human beings are, born, are not only born equal, but are also born uniquely creative. If we ignore that narrative of unique self, we become a world of separate selves in a state of war with each other, which then causes all of the generator functions of existential risk. 
which leads to the very death of humanity, which leads to the sixth mass extinction. Our intention is a planetary awakening in love through unique self symphonies as a revolutionary response to existential threat. Let's make a revolution. How can, if we really get this, right, Sahele? How can we not cry? Right, if we really get this, right? Thank you so much for that gorgeous Dharma recapitulation. Right, if we really get this, how can we not cry tears of joy, right? And tears of a broken heart and tears of longing and tears of trembling before she, as we realize that she needs our service. Avodat Sorach Gavoa, reality needs our service. And reality needs your service. And we need each other as a band of outrageous lovers coming together as the revolutionaries, but literally as the revolutionaries. Right? What animates, if you want to get a sense of what animates, what's the feeling, right, that animates one mountain, many paths. It's not a fundamentalist religious feeling, although there's value in that. And it's not a human potential movement or new age feeling, although there's value in that. And it's not an intellectual political podcast, although there's value in that. But the feeling is revolution. Think cafe in Paris, right? Or in St. Petersburg as Marxism was spreading and Marxism was missing so many critical pieces. So it devolved into communism, which destroyed reality. But there was this moment, right? Because of course, communism is, I wanna get this straight with you because <clears throat> this is gonna be the piece we're gonna talk about today. Communism is utopianism sans first principles. Did everyone get that? Communism is this utopian vision to actually shift and take responsibility. It's a cosmocentric vision, right? It's a cosmocentric vision. But what is it missing? Right, it's missing first principles, right? It's missing first principles, right? Right? And by the way, I think I got to get this right. Oh my God, Sochital. Sochital, do I got that right now? Sochital, do I got that? Yes, Sochital, do we got that right? That's the most exciting thing happening today. Forget about saving the world. We got it right. Oh my God. Yes. Tom, brother, we got it right. And getting a name right is everything. Right. And that's exactly what communism didn't understand. Communism didn't understand that every person's an irreducible, unique self, that reality is having a societal experience. Right. And that getting societal's name right really matters because we need societal and we can't do it without her. Reality needs your service. And the name of the divine in the deepest reading of the interior sciences is the name of every being that ever was, is, or will be inscribed together in the name of God. And if one name is missing from the name of God, the name of God has no power, right? We're all part of the divine name. It's so deep. That's a first principle and a first value of cosmos. Communism was utopianism, right? It's the move to an actual cosmocentric consciousness. I'm going to, right? I'm going to be first world centric. I'm going to feel the whole world and I'm going to feel, right, that the whole world, right, needs to be changed and I'm responsible to change it. And I'm going to take responsibility for the whole thing. That's called utopianism. That's gorgeous. But communism was utopianism, sans first principles and first values. So we're at a moment today where we need to take responsibility for the whole thing. If you want to know the energy animating, what's the energy animating one mountain, many paths, right? the energy is on the one hand, we're a band of outrageous lovers. And we actually understand that we live in a world of outrageous pain. And the only response to outrageous pain is outrageous love. And we live in a world of outrageous beauty. And the only response to outrageous beauty is outrageous love. And outrageous love is not ordinary love. Outrageous love is not mere human sentiment, right? Outrageous love is not a strategy between two separate self egos. Outrageous love is 
the current of reality itself. It's the heart of existence itself. Outrageous love is the eros. Reality is eros and eros has expressions as intimacy and as desire and as uniqueness, radical uniqueness and as creativity and as personhood. These are first principles and first values of cosmos that evolve from matter to life to mind to the human world, and then they evolve to the human world. So these are not just first principles and first values. These are evolving first principles and first values. And to articulate these first principles and first values and to bring them together with a utopian vision, meaning a vision of moving from homo sapien, the old vision of the human being, which itself has been downgraded and degraded. We've begun to understand the human being as this hyper small, separate self engaged in rivalrous conflict, governed by a win-lose metrics. The narrative, the plot line is a success story. That's become the animating narrative and story. And that animating narrative and story is the source of the existential risk to our very humanity, to the death, to cause the death, right, of humanity through the extraction model, through the exponential growth curves, through the widening gap of inequity between haves and have-nots, through rogue actors with access to exponential tech, right? A whole list of issues which then contribute to climate change, which then contribute to the nuclear threat, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So this, this false narrative, this false story, the story of the old human and the old humanity, right? This broken homo sapien, right? Is actually the root cause of existential risk, which is literally the death of, of humanity. And, and, right? This failure of narrative is leading to not just the death of humanity, which is the first form of existential risk, but the death of our humanity, which is the second form, right? Not that human beings will disappear, but we'll stop being human as we understand human beings to be. And that's the direction we're moving in. And so what we're doing is who are we, right? We are a band of outrageous lovers who are revolutionaries, right? And the energy that animates us, right? Is think again, back to our cafe in Paris or in St. Petersburg, it's Marxism. But as we started, Marxism is without first values and first principles, right? It, it, it's, part, it's part of an assumption that the cosmos is purely material and run only by the forces of the techno-economic base. And all those forces are enormously important. And Marx's insights are critically important. They're part of the story. Marx didn't understand that there's actually value in cosmos underneath the material structure of cosmos, there's value, right? And value means, wow, right? Value means first values and first principles. Value is not reducible, right? Value is not deconstructible, that actually the human being and the dignity of the individual human being has ultimate value. And you can't tinker and utopian reconstruct or remold society, right? Not in alignment with the first principles and first values of cosmos, right, that evolve and appear uniquely in us. We actually have to be in alignment with those first values and first principles. And the single most important thing we can do today is to actually reclaim them. But to reclaim them is actually not to claim something that was once clear, it's actually to evolve, to articulate a new vision of first values and first principles, because that vision's gotten lost. It's gotten lost and, and it's never been fully and appropriately articulated. Now, I, I want to see if I can, right, with your permission, right, stay with me for a second, people. Can you, and I just, I just, I leaned forward to look at the, at the chat box. So sorry for getting in your face. I apologize. S stay close for a second. Okay, let's see if we can just stay close because we're here. We're trying to set our intention. Let me just check the time. We're trying to set our intention here. We're in one mountain, many paths. Our context is revolution. And our context is this band of outrageous lovers. Every week we want to blow our hearts open. We want to be inspired, right? We want to be breathed, right, by love itself. We want to be breathed by outrageous love itself. 
but we're not a local community church or even a an international church or synagogue or mosque or secular humanist center that's coming together so that everyone can just feel good. Feeling good's wondrous, but, but we actually have a vision. It's a revolutionary vision, which is we want to actually enter into the source code of what's happening, understand it, diagnose it, because diagnosis is, is the first stage to being able to transform, to heal. So we need accurate diagnosis, and then we need to articulate the new set of memes, right? The new story, right? That actually becomes the animating plot line, right? Of a global ethos for a global civilization. Right? Because the failure of story, right? The failure of narrative of self, right? Is the source of existential risk, whether that's the death of humanity or the death of our humanity, which is two forms of existential risk. So it's only evolving, articulating a new story based on the best validated insights of pre-modern, modern, and post-modern thinking that can allow us to respond to that existential risk. Now, if you think we're excited about this, yeah, we're excited about it. I mean, excited though, not in a superficial fun way. Yes, there's enormous joy. There's joy at being able to take our seat at the table and participate directly in the evolution of culture and consciousness. Does everyone get that? Right? Like that's, that's a big sentence. There's enormous joy at being able to take our seat at the table and participate directly in the evolution of culture and consciousness. And there's also a sense of urgency, right? It's not all sweetness and light as Rudolf Aalto said once. It's not all sweetness and light. There's an ecstatic urgency. So we're, we're revolutionaries. We're a band of outrageous lovers. And we wanna to come together and be radically inspired so that we'll actually take action, but we can't be inspired in a superficial way. I had a, a conversation once a couple of years ago with maybe it was about four or five years ago with Tony Robbins at his house in Florida, a, a lovely man. And, you know, Tony is about kind of activating the, the state of inspiration. And I believe in that. And I, I've done that, you know, in many ways in my life in the best way I could. And, and I share that with Tony. I think Tony's doing a a beautiful job in that. And I said to Tony, that's in the end not going to work. It'll work for the people you do it for, which is gorgeous and, 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 and more power to you. But we can't actually heal where we are today. We can't respond right to existential risk. We can't respond to a world of a broken source code without actually articulating a new source code. Right, new memes based on first values and first principles, right, which are new narratives of identity, right, new universe story, new narrative of power, new narrative of desire, and new narrative of communion. Those five, right, universe story, narrative of identity, narrative of power, narrative of desire, narrative of communion. And so I said to him, I said, you know, the idea of unique self, which I began to explain, right, to Tony which is not just your separate self or your power or your superpower. It's a much deeper structural idea. That idea will change the world. Right? That idea can save the world. Right? And that idea is not based on Tony's charism or Oriana's or charism right? or Mark's charism. Right? It's based on the charism of she moving and animating the idea itself. Charism means spirit moving through. So at the center of one mountain, many paths is the chat box. The chat box is the community. It's where we love each other. It's where we talk to each other. And at the center is the Dharma, right? The Dharma meaning the first values and first principles, right? Which are the basis of the new set of narratives that become the matrix for a global ethos, for a global civilization. And in that sense, I just wanna say our entire system says no, for example, to the guru model. In the guru model, the guru, right, is the person who God moves through and is the source of authority. We say utterly no to that. And we also say utterly no to the kind of San Francisco new age model. We're all just kind of getting together and talking and we're all just friends on the path and, you know, everyone's opinions equally valid and, and you know, and, and let's just make sure that we're you know, listening deeply and reflecting back to each other. No, we're not doing that either, right? There actually is, right, a dharma. And not everything is equal. Not all ideas are equal. 
right? We've actually spent, you know, 25, 30 years trying to work through, right, and integrating, right, the best set of validated insights from pre-modern, modern, and post-modern, and we're putting forth a set of ideas, and they're completely challengeable, right? but you got to challenge them, not just say I disagree, you got to say, okay, wow, I've looked at all the theories of self, and here's seven reasons why we need to adjust it this way, and we'll adjust it in a second. So we're, we're a unique self-symphony creating this Dharma together, and anyone who wants to step in, meaning I want to step in for realsies, and step in and study and open my heart and practice because I, I want to actually participate at the table and actually evolve in the source code, step on in, right? Everybody's welcome. At the center is these, this new source code, right? This evolution of the source code. And so therefore, and I'm always conflicted whenever we come to one mountain, I'm conflicted between wanting to share a beautiful story or a beautiful transmission or an insight, but, but that's not enough, right? I, right? I want to take you in to the depth of the source code and understand diagnostically what's broken and how we make it whole, because that's our commitment. Does that make sense, everyone? So I, want, I wanted to share with you today just kind of that, that right? Who, got, who gets that? Who gets that? Anybody get that? Who gets that? Who gets it? Somebody just, can, you, can you feel that? Right? That's our commitment. Right? That's our commitment here. That's what we're about. Right? That's what we're trying to do together. So it's a very, we're in a very unique place. Right? So David's about to resonate the code, right? David's about to resonate the code. And maybe just before we resonate the code, we're going to resonate the code. And then we're going to do a more. And there's a new a more that was created that we're not going to do yet this week. We're still in process. Tanya, we're getting there. So, so much honor. We're actually going to do a beautiful Oriana, right? A more this week. And we're, we're gathering a mores, which is awesome. But just before, before it just, just, I want to just thank everyone, right? It's just so good to be together and everyone matters so much and, and we're so beautiful, right? There's a, a text in the Song of Solomon, Hinach yafa rayati, hinach yafa. Behold, you are beautiful, beloved. Behold, behold. It's just with your permission, just to, to honor and thank all of us. Behold, you are beautiful, beloved. Behold, behold, and I know it's the words, just put them in the chat box. Behold, we are beautiful, beloveds. Behold, behold, Solomon from the Song of Solomon. Band of outrageous lovers. Yafa, behold, we are beautiful beloveds. Behold, 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 we are beautiful beloveds. Behold, behold, and band of our righteous lovers, let's meet in the chat box and let's blow it open so our hearts are so wide that we can actually enter the source code and evolve it. Behold, we are beautiful band of outrageous lovers. Behold, 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 we are beautiful band of outrageous lover, Marxist with first principle, first values, revolutionaries. Behold, 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 we are beautiful beloveds. Behold, 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 we are beautiful beloveds. Behold, behold, one more time together around the world. Behold, we are beautiful band of evolutionary lovers, revolutionaries. Behold, 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 we are beautiful beloveds. Behold, behold. And behold, Tahaley, thank you so much for your Dharma recap. And your tear at the end, and then your tear held, held everything, right? All of the Dharma. And we turn to you, David, David Eitan, right? And resonate the code, brother. Thank David, you so you much, know, Mark. Big code this week. Big code, right? Yes, yeah. big code, big code. Slow you, know, you know, Mark, the this this chant you just did, you you chanted this same chant a couple of years ago to me. And I remember I was at my job and I was struggling with my identity. You know, what am I supposed to be doing here as a sales coordinator? And I was sort of lost. And you chanted that to me. 
And I remember just being broken open to tears. And I had this realization that actually I could step into my job that I didn't think I liked or didn't think I could do anything uh, at and realized I could see spirit everywhere and evolution happening all around me. And I could participate in that evolution no matter what position I was at in my company. So it was a direct transmission of unique self and what it meant. And that was just from your heart to mine. So I, that stuck with me and I thank you. Amen. Mwah. Yeah. Mwah. So friends, let's uh, resonate this code. Big code, two parts. The first part shows us kind of the importance of uh, this unique self emergence throughout history and how it's come to be. And the second part is where we are today and comparing unique self to other forms of uh, identity in our culture. This week's evolutionary love code. The unique self is the highest integration of the leading edge values of traditional, modern, and progressive thought, also known as pre-modern, modern, and post-modern. The emergence of unique self takes the unique value propositions of each of these great three great stages of, in the evolution of consciousness, which is the evolution of love, and weaves them together in a new emergent of love, which is precisely what we have called homo amor. The unique self, part two, the unique self is the inward space of uniquely lived experience from which meaning is discovered. The unique self is under attack in multiple ways, including the assumption by big tech and big data that the human being is no more than a social self. The assumption by the spiritual traditions that the human being is either a true self or an obedient self. And the shared assumption world over that the human being is merely a separate self. The cultivation of unique self is therefore the overriding moral imperative at this moment in history. And I turn my word back to you, beloved Dr. Mark. Thank you so much, David, right? And we're gonna go into that code. We're not gonna do the whole thing this week. We're gonna do the second part this week and we're gonna rewrite the code a little more sharply for next week, but we got the general matrix, right? We're gonna be looking at, you know, particularly, right? The unique self is the inward space of uniquely lived experience from which right? From which, let's see if we can find it. Let me see if I can find it. From which meaning is discovered. The inward space of uniquely lived experience from which meaning is discovered. That's a big sentence. The unique self is under attack in multiple ways. And maybe a better way to say it is, is the unique self needs to be articulated because the assumptions of self, the narratives of self, right, are fundamentally downgraded. Right? We've got the narrative of big tech and big data, which I want to unpack, which no one understands. No one understands that big tech and big data are operating from a particular narrative of self. We've been talking about that the last three or four weeks. This is new, which I would call the social self. And we'll prove that that's true. Right? And, the, and, and the, the, the entire web right, is based as a reflection on the false narrative of self or the partial narrative of self that animates big tech and big data, right? Social self. And the other assumption, right? The assumption of the enlightenment spiritual traditions is no, you're a true self, means you're one with the all, but actually your store you've got to move beyond. And that's a second false or partial assumption. Third assumption is that you're an obedient self. You're obedient to your religion, to your tradition, right? Again, right? That can be partially true if you're within a particular tradition, but that's not what the self is at its core, right? And of course, everyone assumes that the human being is some version, right? Pretty much everyone, right? Of a separate self, right? I'm a discrete, hyper-individualized human being, right? And so, wow, none of those work, right? And, and tragedy comes, right, from these partial, fragmented, fractured notions of self. And each comes from a particular moment in history. So we have to integrate the best of all of those because each one has a spark of the holy, right? Each one is true but partial. We integrate them, we weave them together and something new emerges, which is much greater than the sum of the parts, right? What emerges is this new activation of self, this re-selfing at the very heart of cosmos, right? Unique self, the emergence of unique self is a re-selfing. It's a good word. It's a reselfing at the very heart of cosmos. That's what we need to be doing. And we're going to talk about that today. Okay. But it's got to be soaked. 
rooted, intoxicated, right, with right, the very heart of cosmos itself, which is heart, which is feeling. The universe feels, and the universe feels love. And the universe doesn't feel ordinary love. The universe feels eros, right, outrageous love, right, amor, right? It's an amorous cosmos. It's an intimate universe. And intimacy and amor are not human creations. The human being expresses uniquely at whatever their developmental stages at higher and higher levels of consciousness, right? This quality of amor that is inherent to cosmos. And that's the good news, right? The good news is that it's not a reductive materialist cosmos. It's not a tale told by an idiot full of sounds and furies signifying nothing. The good news is that the universe is a love story. It is a love story. And that your story and my story are chapter and verse in the universe, a love story. It is an amorous cosmos. And that's why we know the revolution is going to succeed. But wow, how long will it take? And how many tears along the way? That depends on us. So let's go to Amor. Right? Oriana takes inside to Amor. We chant it every week, Amor. Here we go. Together around the world. Thank you. Oh, my God. Cha. other in the chat box. You can feel I'm more right in the chat box so we can feel each other. Oriana, thank you. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, thank you. Let's bring this together. So we're going to go into prayer. And when we pray, we're affirming a first principle and first value of cosmos. It's not a made up pre-modern idea. It's not a cosmic vending machine. So pre-modernity got it wrong. It made it too ritualistic. God was hijacked by a particular nation or particular religion. And if you put in the right coins, you got the right results. That's not exactly right. Modernity itself got embarrassed by prayer. Kant says the modern man is embarrassed to pray. And post-modernity forgot all about it. No, prayer is actually, let's go post-post-modernity. We're articulating and weaving the new source code. Prayer is an expression, it's beautiful, of a first principle and first value of cosmos actually have a cluster of first principles and first values of cosmos. So I'm going to go to the chat box. People have been with us, right? Oh my God, Randall, Joyce, right? Adele and Tom, right? Thank you for that gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous amour. So I'm going to go to the chat box now. So what are the first principles and first values of cosmos, right? And we meet in the chat box, everyone, that prayer is based on, okay? Anybody, there's, there's about four or five of them. 
There's first principles and first values. And a first principle and first value means, means you can locate it inside. Let's see if we can get this. A first principle and first value means you locate it inside or you go inside. We call that anthroontology. You go to the inward space of meaning. You get quiet in that inward space and you access first principles and first values that live in that inward space of meaning. That's where it's anthroontological. It lives inside of you. Now, slow. And then you realize those first principles and first values live all across the world and in all through stages of human history. And then you realize that actually there's even earlier versions of them that live in the world of life, pre-human, then even in, even in the world of matter in earlier and more fundamental forms. That these first principles and first values animate reality itself and they evolve at each stage. So what are the first principles and first values, right? That, right, that, that, so what are they, right? First principle and first value. What's the first principle and first value? So the first one would be, this is fantastic. This is great to do together. Personhood. Personal. Let's see if we can get them down. Right? Prayer is based on person. What does personhood mean? It means that reality is not just third person. It's not just it's. Reality is not just first person, right? Which is my own inward experience of self, right? It's also second person. My first person meets your first person and a new space in between is formed. Okay, it's a big deal. So prayer is based on reality, not just being reductive materialist it's. Reality is not just exteriors, reality is interior. Interiors are a first principle. And one form of interior reality is personhood, but there's a personal quality to cosmos, which means I have an experience of my own interior, which means that I can have joy and I can suffer and I can make meaning. And my interior yearns for your interior. That's personhood, okay? And that that personhood that lives between us is not just you and I, it's not just two separate selves, that personhood participates in the field of personhood. Does everyone get that? Let's see if we can get that, let's see if we can get that sentence together, right? My personhood participates in the field of personhood. Does everyone get that? So if a human being doesn't have the experience of my interior finding the interior of another human being, I'm devastated, right? The movie cast by Tom Hanks 15 years ago, he's stuck on, a, on an island after his cargo plane, UPS crashes. He's learned how to survive. He's, he's mastered the elements of the island. It's beautiful, tropical. He can live there by himself forever, but he risks his life 95% death, casts himself into a makeshift raft on the sea because there's no other human inwardness to meet his inwardness. Right? There's no other personhood to meet his personhood. Right? That's the principle. That's a first value of personhood. And, uh, right, and it goes all the way up and all the way down. Right? So personhood lives at the human level and personhood evolves through all the stages of human consciousness. But there's already personhood at the level of life, right? at the world of animals. Right? There's already a dimension of interiority. And and there's, there's good argument to say that there's actually personhood even in the world of matter. That's what Alfred North Whitehead, the mathematician who wrote Principa Mathematica with Bertrand Russell, talked about the prehension, the proto-interiority that lives right in the allurements of the atomic world. So this notion of inwardness, which ultimately generates personhood, is a first principle and first value of cosmos. It's not just me meaning my person who participates in the person of the whole thing. Does everyone get that? Who gets that? Who's, who's tracking here? Just give me a sense. Who's tracking here? Who's tracking? Anyone tracking? Anyone alive here? Do we get why this matters? This matters. It's personhood, right? What else? What's the other first principle and first value upon which prayer is based? My person, my person, it's not generic. It's, there's not just a field of generic personhood, right? It's not just that the consciousness has a personal quality. It's that my, I have unique personhood, right? And so Tanya, right, Tanya, there's never been Tanya ever again. There never will be Tanya, there never has been Tanya. Reality is having a uniquely personal Tanya experience. Tanya is a unique quality of intimacy that never was, is, or will be again. So Tanya has unique personhood. So it's personhood and it's uniqueness, right? right wow, 
right? And three, right, is the first principle of intimacy right, that personhoods want to come together, right? That there's a movement in reality to move from separateness to integration, from alienation to integration, from, right, being a part to being part of a whole without losing my own individuality. That's the movement to intimacy. And the movement to intimacy is the movement of reality. Reality is evolution. And reality is the evolution of intimacy. And the movement of intimacy is the movement to create new shared identities, whether that's between subatomic particles or that's between human beings. You begin to notice everyone, these are first principles and first values. So in prayer, right, I realize I'm a unique quality of intimacy that never was, is, or will be ever again. My uniqueness, therefore, is dignified. My person is dignified, which means that my needs are dignified. Did we get that right? Prayer affirms the dignity of personal need. And I desperately want to be held and I want to be received, but that desperation to be held and received is not a pathology. It's a beautiful desperation. It's a sacred desperation. It's, it's the desperation with which Rumi wrote love notes to Shams and Shams wrote love notes back to Rumi. It's the outrageous love notes, which actually birthed reality itself. It's this desperation to actually find this holy, gorgeous desperation, right? To find right the shared identity. And we never exhaust that with only one person, right? Underneath and beyond any individual person, because it's never dependent on one person, there's a field of intimacy. And that field of intimacy is personal. And we call that field the infinity of intimacy. Other people call it God. But, but God means, God means not that which is other or alienated from reality, right? not a cosmic vending machine. Right? God is the aliveness of reality that is both beyond the personal and the sense of personality, but also the infinitely alive personhood of reality. And I begin to realize that personhood that lives between us participates in this larger field of personhood. And just like you can hear me talking, and I can hear you talking, I heard Tahaley and I heard David, right? The infinity of intimacy can hear us talking. So when we pray, it's intimacy seeking intimacy. And it's me or you as a unique quality of intimacy, turning to the field of intimacy itself that holds us, the personal field that knows our name and saying, oh my God, oh my God, hold me, hold me, help me, love me. Enter me, penetrate me, caress me. Can I tell you what I need? Can I please tell you what I desperately need? Will you hold me? Will you help me? Will you love me? That's prayer, not a dogma. Right? Not a dogma. When I first shared this notion of prayer with my friend Ken Wilbur, right? Ken in his book Up from Eden categorically rejects prayer as the early writing in the integral world. And we talked about it deeply and Ken had an open mind and open heart. And we, we went so deep into this and we actually really began to understand that prayer is not a dogma. Prayer is the realization of second person. It's the realization of the first principle and first value of personhood. And we actually formulated together right, in, the, in the integral world. I was there and Ken did a gorgeous job right, in integral spirituality and Thomas Keating passed away and, and brother David Stendhal Rast, a beautiful friend and beautiful man. We formulated this notion of the, the three faces of the divine. That notion came out of these conversations and was a way of including second person, right? That God's third person, right? The force of physics, the forces of mathematics, the force of errors moving through cosmos, right? First person, right? The divinity that lives in you as you and through you. Tatvam ase, thou art that, you are that consciousness. Right, and second person, right? Divinity, right? Reality has a, a first principle and first value, right? Of, of I and thou, right? And we, we love each other, the infinity of intimacy. So that's how we pray and that's why we pray, okay? So we're gonna turn, we're gonna pray now and we're gonna invite Leonard Cohen, right? In his hymn, The Holy and the Broken Hallelujah. And we don't have time to do this now, but at some point I wanna spend a couple of weeks with you just doing a deep dive into the lineage sources of Leonard Cohen, which we haven't done. It's super deep, super beautiful. But Leonard Cohen actually 
is bringing together lineages. He's doing something in his body. He's bringing together his own eros and his own confusion, but he's also bringing together deep in that confusion and in that gorgeous confusion, he's bringing together deep lineages of second person, right? And first person. He practiced deep within Western tradition of Hebrew wisdom every week. He practiced and he got this notion of, of turning to the infinity of intimacy that knows your name. And the reason the song has more covers than in any other song, no one knows why. Right? And the reason, right, the song is, is kind of played every place around the world. The Democrats played it and, and the Republicans played it, each at their respective conventions and great gatherings. Why? Right? Because it expresses the second person quality in Cosmos. People are attracted to the song. They're not even quite sure why. But exactly, this is a shared place beyond polarity where we're all reaching for the infinity of intimacy. We're all realizing right, that we are each unique qualities of intimacy and that we, we want to hold each other and we yearn to be held. And the intimate universe is, is a first value and first principle beyond the polarities. And the way we're going to get beyond polarity in politics today is to actually begin to articulate values that are beyond the polarities. What are the shared values? What's the shared story? Wow. Right. Wow. So let's pray. All right. So we're going to do is we're going to listen to Leonard Cohen and I'm going to ask everyone with your permission, right? Don't get on your phone. Don't send a text, right? Just be in. Let's follow the words all the way through. Leonard's with us every week, right? He's on staff. You're awesome, Leonard. Take us inside, right? To hallelujah, to the holy and the broken hallelujah, sung from the mouth of babes. Then we're going to meet in the chat box and we're going to, we're going to pray like we've never prayed before. And then we're going to do Part two, first principles and first values. We'll do our code all the way through. Take us inside. Oh, my God.
to my best, but it wasn't much I could have feel so I tried to touch I took the truth, I didn't come to fool you And even though it all went wrong I stand before the Lord a song With nothing on my tongue To that, we pray. Hallelujah. Literally, intoxication, which is broken, and intoxication, which is so pure and so beautiful, the holy and the broken, hallelujah. We pray and we ask for everything shot, and we read the prayers in the chat box. So if you're new, go to the chat box and write your prayer. And there's something that happens when you write it. Shot, I pray that she holds me and helps me kick my own ass right? Oh my God. And creating an awesome online course on pleasure. Oh my God. Right? Right. Terry. Yes. I pray that we remember love. Paul, I pray we forgive and learn. So we evolve and uniquely live our humanity to connect and love each other open links. Right? I pray for the courage and inspiration to find my way with love and empathy through the, the huge challenging major of division and pain in our countries, families, communities. Amen. Lynn. Wow. Hallelujah. Right from the heart, Lirazi, I pray that Malika's father heals from COVID and he returns home soon. Yes, right, Uts, right, I pray for my inclusion and the infinity of intimacy, right, Vashti, right, I pray that Uts, it's so good to see you that all violent human beings, Vashti, are transformed by love and acceptance of the connectivity of all of creation into love beings as soon as cosmically possible. And old friends of mine, I haven't talked to them in a lot, named their daughter love being Simona. Simona, we so good to see you. Simona, so good to see you and can't wait to hear from you. I pray for more ability to access newness in myself and for the ability of the world. And, and newness lives all the time. One of the ways we access newness is we realize it's literally new every second. That's a quality of reality. It's never been before, right? Oh my God, right? And like all the way, right? right let me take an, 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 an Amor cosmos, right? This huge, beautiful prayer, right? All of the thing, right? Right. I, your whole gorgeous prayer. Amen. Right. Jacqueline, I pray to, to know and be known, to hold and be held, to love and be loved. Peter, I pray for the fulfillment of, of understanding partial, complete, right? The whole thing. Tell, I pray that we allow all our holy tears to fall. Krista Josepha, I pray for the discipline to create a powerful, strong body, to serve, right, the revolution every second of the day. So all of us, right, let's create powerful, strong bodies in the best way we can. And our powerful, strong bodies look a thousand different ways, but let's eat well and, and eat the right nourishment, right, and, 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 and just be strong because our body is, right, the vessel of divinity. And it is divinity itself, right? So blessings, as long as we're in this world, let's blow away our bodies, right? Right, you guess, right? I pray for the spiritual awakening of human beings. David, I pray to love like I've never loved before. Tracy, welcome, Tracy. I pray for continued divine guidance to create. Jackie, right? I pray that I courageously show up, especially with those whose good opinion I might lose for not conforming, right? Right, Enika, right? I pray to stand firm in the storm of life, Enika, right? You're holding all of us, Enika, right? And we're holding you in love, the process of growth. Jamie, right? I pray for the evolution of love within me and participating with the whole. Right, right, Krista, I pray for my sister to feel, to heal and recover from addiction. And I can't wait to do, to be with, 
with the sisters in Holy of Holies. Rob, but I pray that love shines through everything, every word, every song, every movement, every meeting, and, and I step up, right? Rob, right, right, right. Rob's getting ready to step up. Sherry, and Sherry, you wrote to panelists, write to all panelists and attendees if you can. I pray we manifest love from our very core G, but I pray for an open heart, an open mind, and a felt sense of enemy with the divine. Jill, right? Henry and I pray that we deepen forgiveness and celebration, right? Amen. Kathy, I pray that my friend and roommate Clifford finds clarity and truth in 2021. Amen. Clifford, yes. Suzette, I pray that outrageous love flows from me between everyone and most importantly, to everyone who feels alone. Yes, Myra, but I pray that we remember that we are because, right, that we, that we are because of us all, right? right? And Tanya, I can't wait to hear your amour, but I pray for more embodied action to create my website and share my unique self light in the world. Amen. Up shoulds, right? Up woods, excuse me. I pray for healing myself for a new start. Yes, right? I pray for my daughter, Right, Tess says Claire to find her way in the world, and it's a hard time to be looking for a job now, right? In that particular sector, so mad blessing to Tess to find a job. Tom, we missed you last week. It's great to be with you. I heard from Sean and Victoria that you guys had a beautiful time. I pray that all people across the planet, regarding regarding station or location, right? I think you mean regardless of station or location, have access to the health care we all need, right? Harry, Harry, I got your letter. Right, right. That's a, an, such an important story. It's such an important step that just happened with, 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 with X. But I pray for humanity to evolve to the experience of mutual recognition to and by other. And Harry, we're going to evolve therapy together. Harry and I are working on that together to evolve therapy and the way it's practiced to the next level. Right, Oriana, I pray for courage, right? Calling and courage, love from one heart. Sochital. But I pray to honor the desires of my heart and live in outrageous love of all joy and being. Jason, welcome. I pray for the, the amends of humanity, the dissolving of codependency. Right, Sharon. Right, I pray for Gaia, the web of life. Right, amen. Sandra Williams, I pray to feel my interiority. Right, Jamie. Right, Joycey. Joycey, I can't wait to be with you in Holy of Holies. I pray for Linda's uncle that he recovers from a hit and run accident. Right, I pray to see her in every face and every place, Claire Lynn Schwartz. Right, and I'm going right like wow, friends. We we wrap all of these prayers together. We weave them into a bouquet. And I want to ask everyone who wants to say amen to say amen in the chat box. And amen, the word amen means trust. Trust means I trust these prayers. And the word amen means art. There's art in these prayers. And the word amen means practice. Right, right. This practice opens it all up. Right. Wow. And the word amen also means the nursing mother. Right, God, we're, we're, we're nursing at the divine breast, the breast of reality that loves us madly, the infinity of intimacy. There's the four meanings in the original Hebrew of the word amen, right? So we scream out amen, right? Amen, amen, amen. So thank you, everyone. Krista, take us inside love. Yay. Wow. So Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mark. Oh my God, that was wonderful and deep and beautiful. And actually we as a unique self symphony here together right now as a band of outrageous lovers, we have the opportunity to step in and to be the change. But before we practice together this week, I want to remind us all of the image of the little drop of water that can have such a huge impact, such a ripple effect on the whole ocean on all of the water all around the world. So let's be that little drop of water right now together. I want to share my screen with you and share a beautiful clip, another piece of the beautiful clip that David has created for us. And I want to invite all of us to step in and share this clip right now together on this web, on this digital world so we can actually share a drop of outrageous love into the tech blacks and into the digital world so let's get ready let's enjoy one minute of this clip together and find the link to this clip in the chat box and share it on your social media right now share it on your facebook your instagram your whatsapp with all of your friends let's do this right now together it's the experience of being called at the experience of the call. I'm called by reality. I'm personally addressed by reality. 
right? Hearing the call. Step one is to discern the call. That's step one. And step two is to answer the call. So when I'm called, it's not just my early stuff. It's not just my grandiosity. No, it's my true grandeur. I'm not a separate self person. I'm the discretion of infinity in a point, in a point of consciousness, which is reality speaking through me, being me, right? Or said differently, reality calling my name. When you feel called, it's not just the experience that one person is falling in love with you. It's that reality is falling in love with you. And the experience of being called is the experience of, right? Reality falling madly in love with us. Wow, imagine a digital world infused with outrageous love like that. So find the link again in the chat box and share this beautiful clip on your Facebook right now. Thank you so much for participating. And thank you also for all the people who already have been participating this week. And Mark, did you want to speak? Oh, we're unmuted and everything. So, okay, sorry. So thank you everyone for sharing this clip already. So many people have done that and it already has a thousands of views. So let's just continue doing that. Thank you so much. And right now let's actually go to our beautiful website, which is onemountainmanypaths.org because I want to invite you to an amazing event that will happen this week, Thursday, February the 4th, a beautiful second dialogue with Dr. Mark Gaffney and Andrew Cohen. And this week they will be speaking about the three faces of God. So if you want to deepen your experience and knowledge of the personhood of divinity, please show up there. It will be on Thursday and on this webpage, you can register and it's totally, absolutely for free. So you are invited to join us there. While we are here on the web website, let's also click here on the membership page. Most importantly, this is where all of you can step in to become a member. Let's begin actually by scrolling all the way down because this is where you can find all of the courses that Dr. Mark Gaffney has created uh, with the beautiful Dharma. And here you can actually see Awakening Your Unique Self. This week we've been speaking a lot about Unique Self, Unique Self Symphony, and there is so much more to it. So I want to invite you and encourage you to step in and actually study this beautiful course, hours and hours of wisdom and teaching around Unique Self and Awakening Your Own Unique Self. This course, but also these other eight courses you will get access to if you step in and, and become a member of One Mountain, which you can do by making your very own contribution. You can choose your own contribution. It already starts from only $25 a month and you will get access to these courses, but also to our online platform, connecting with other members. We have a wonderful weekly writing group, writing to the evolutionary love codes together with Christina Amelong and many more exciting online meeting spaces where we get to practice outrageously loving each other all the time. So you are so welcome to join us there. Speaking of outrageous love, on our Facebook page right here, which is called Outrageous Acts of Love, we are invited to share our outrageous love with the world by writing our outrageous love letters and writing the stories of the outrageous acts of love that we have committed this week. And 
here on this page, you can see Rob actually shared a beautiful, beautiful, outrageous love letter in a video. So I want to invite you to watch that, like that, comment on that. And this is another amazing way to infuse the web with outrageous love. So take a moment to check out this page, like the page so you are sure that you will get all the notifications. And if you click here on the community tab, this is where all of you can post. So let's actually make that commitment to show up as a band of outrageous outrageous lovers and share our outrageous love with the world. Thank you so much for being with us again this week. And I'm looking forward and can't wait to be together again next week. And with that, I give my word back to you, Mark. Sha, yeah, Sha, yeah, thank you, everyone. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you, everyone. Have the most beautiful, gorgeous week ever. We're way over time. So mad love, mad delight. Oh, my God. Yay. Have a gorgeous, 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 gorgeous week. Okay, and any concluding chant that you want to put on to Haley, how deep is your love? How could anyone ever tell you? Let's put on something so we can kind of end in the space of holy song. Okay, yay. Cha. 25 years, I'm a lot still.